Good evening. Today, our guest is Vladimir Brochkin, who published his seventh book, titled From Vladimir Putin to Vladimir Lenin, from 1923 to 2023. Tell me, Vladimir Brochkin, what led you to write this book and what inspired you to publish it? Yes, thank you for having me. Um, this book is a result of uh, my whole career, many years of study of uh, Russian Soviet history. And the question that preoccupied me most was the fate of Russian communism, a communist revolution. My first books were about the revolution, the civil war, the 1920s, Russia after Lenin, uh, and then many articles on Soviet politics as time went on. But this book is an attempt to bring it all together, and most importantly in terms of how the Russians as people changed uh, in terms of uh, perceiving who they are and what their future is. And that's why it's called From Vladimir Lenin to Vladimir Putin. Mm -hmm. And when the subtitle is Russia in Search of its Identity, what do you mean by that? Yeah, because uh, Russia changed its identity. And, and this sounds very strange because in most countries, uh, the identity stays the same. The French know that that's la grande nation, the, the, the identity hasn't changed since the French Revolution. The Americans too, they believe that they're the land of the free. There is an uh, American idea of American democracy tied with American identity. Now. Uh, in, in the German case, the identity changed several times, but even more so with Russia. Uh, the, this used to be the Russia of the Tsars, when the identity of people was um, loyal subjects of the Tsar. If you ask somebody in 1913, who are you? A, a Russian peasant would not say he's Russian. He would say, I'm, I'm Orthodox. And then he would say that he's from Oryol province. And on the third thing, if you push him, he would say that he's Russian. So this was not a local identity and religious identity was number one. But then it changed with the Bolshevik identity who tried to uh, make people believe that they're Soviet citizens. They're not Russian. Russia was a taboo. It's not Russian at all. They're communists and, and they're workers and they're proletarians and they're fighters for socialism with a totally different identity. Then it changed one more time, then they had to believe that they are uh, the uh, followers of Comrade Stalin, the wisest leader of all mankind. Again, Russia was in the backseat. And then the Soviet identity just fizzled out, and it was only after the collapse of communism that the Russians had to decide who they were. And again, there was a several transition since 1991 as to who Russians are and how they define themselves. This is one of the key uh, discussions in this book. And what would you say is the single most important idea of the book? The single most, I most important idea is in the title, and that is Russia in search of its identity. To understand Putin's Russia, or Russia under President Putin, which is most of the entire 21st century, it's already 24 years, one has to understand constant shift in the identity of the Russian people. And it's not of Putin's making. It is a process that is going on on its own, sometimes with unpredictable twists and turns, but it is still a process that it hasn't finished. Russia is still in search of its identity in terms of its relationship to Europe. The Russians are asking, are we part of Europe or not? Uh, in terms of relation to Asia, in terms of relationship to Byzantine past and the Orthodox religion, because the, mo the, the contemporary idea of Russianin is not just Russian. There is no word that's equivalent to translate Russianin. It's not Russian. It's, it's a member of the Russian state. And that includes Tatars and Chechens and all kinds of others. So that's another search of identity, how you define people who speak Russian and also share certain values. The Ukrainians speak Russian too, so that's another complication. It's not everybody who speaks Russian that has a Russian identity. It could be an enemy too. So that makes it very complicated in terms of defining contemporary issue of identity of Russia. And would you say there's some similarities between Stalin and Putin, or rather Lenin and Putin, like it's implied in the title? 
Uh, no, I don't think that it's implied in the title. The, the title suggests that there are certain similarities between Lenin and Putin, and there are fundamental differences. And of course, this is one of the most intriguing parts, because outwardly it looks like Vladimir Lenin and Vladimir Putin are similar in that they both challenge the West, and that is fundamental to their own life work. Lenin wanted to create a new socialist republic uh, and, and, and have it as a beginning of the world revolution. So for Lenin, Russia is only a vehicle of his project. He doesn't care about Russia. He once said, I don't care about Russia. I care about the Russian uh, the world revolution. Now, uh, Putin, too, uh, wants to challenge the West. Now, that is the crucial, most important aspect of Putin's current policies is to be in opposition to the, as they call it, collective West. But on the other hand, he is absolutely the opposite of Lenin in that he does care about Russia and about Russian statehood, specifically Russia as a state, an organized uh, state apparatus, which he wants to restore. And in some ways, it's fascinating, his Putin's views on Lenin, he believes that Lenin created a time bomb by the Lenin's constitution that allowed republics to leave the Soviet Union, uh, he felt it's a big, big mistake. Uh, another big mistake uh, was to give uh, half of uh, Novorossiya, New Russia lands, to, uh, to what today is Ukraine. Uh, this was Lenin's creation, so Putin is totally opposed to it and believes these are Russian lands. In his speeches, he says Odessa is Russian, Kharkov is Russian, and it was Russian before Lenin gave those territories to Ukraine. So that is a very interesting kind of unity of contradictions. They are similar, and yet they're fundamentally different. And as I know, there's been many books already written uh, about this subject. What makes your book unique? Yeah, my book is unique precisely because the focus is not on the communists per se, because most books of the history of the Soviet Union are finishing with the collapse of the Soviet Union with various interpretations of it, and I do have my own interpretation. Those books that are written about Putin, 90% of them are fundamentally hostile to Putin. They refuse to interpret they condemn and expose. They, they say, oh, he's a former KGB agent, or he's a dictator, or he's this, he's that. It's just labeling. That's not history, that's not explanation. Putin is a product of his own time, and if it wasn't Putin, there would be somebody else with very similar agendas. And the agenda is to restore great Russia. Like America wants to be great again, Russia wants to be great again too. And in, in some sense, Putin's project is to make Russia great again. So uh, what I, my task in this book is to see contemporary Russia in terms of its heritage to the Soviet past and also in terms of its heritage to the pre-Soviet past, uh, the, the empire of the czars. In fact, a more interesting comparison would be between the czar and Putin rather than Lenin and Putin because the czar it, 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 in a way, one could see Putin as a czar, as a kind of a head of a state that is not very interested in elections, but more interested in the greatness of Russia. Okay, that's all the time we have. Thank you for listening and enjoy the book.